And uh, Matt Kenseth is our points leader. The reason he's our points leader is he's got the most wins of any driver in the series this year. He's got seven. I thought you were going to say the reason the points leader is because he has the most points. Well, you're actually tied with oh. Jimmy. But the uh, tiebreaker goes in your favor because of the wins. And Matt drives the number 20, Home Depot. Let's do this, Toyota. And uh, Matt, just talk about you're coming down in here, stretch run, three races to go. Uh, just talk about you know, what your thoughts are as it pertains to that. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, happy to be the leader, even though it's just, even though it's really a tie. And, you know, we got the tiebreaker. I'd be more happy if we were the leader, and it was uh, three and a half weeks from now. So we still got uh, still got three races to go. Glad we're, uh, glad we're still in it. Um, you know, looking forward to the challenge here the next three weeks. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can go out here and, and run away. I know we're capable of running and run up front and uh, get a good result Sunday and keep rolling. Take questions. We'll start with Nate. We'll go to no Ed. questions. All right, thanks, guys. No. <laughs> we'll start with Nate. We'll go to Ed, and then we'll go to Jim. Nate, Nate Ryan, USA Day Sports. Um, last week, Matt Jimmy was talking about the battle that you and he had here at I think 2007. Yeah, he um, beat me. It still makes me mad. <laughs> He's talking about like how he knew he could trust you, and even though you guys were racing as as hard as you could every lap, could you talk about like what you remember about that battle and about how that kind of signifies the way you guys have kind of always raced each other with respect and everything? Yeah, you know, uh, there's been a few races here where I've been leading right down at the end and got beat, and uh, it's always disappointing. This is one of them. Another, or that was one of them. Another one, Jeff Burton beat me on the last lap. I mean, there's been a few of them, so. Uh, yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, I always hate to be out front and get beat. Similar to last week, because I always feel like as a driver, you beg your team to get you in that position. Then when you can't hold on, you feel like it's on you. So, so yeah, I do remember that day. He was faster, ran us down. Um, I think he was leading the points. We were pretty much out of the championship battle at the time, or you know, realistically, out, out of it. I mean, I guess mathematically, we're in it. So, man, I raced him as hard as I could, figuring that, uh, you know, hoping that he would uh, be a little bit cautious and I'd be able to win the race and hang on but I couldn't he uh, he did everything he could and and beat us so yeah I do remember that it was a it was a heck of a race I hope to turn the table someday and, and be able to beat him he's beat me on a, la a couple of them real late beat me on a Las Vegas one time passed me off four the last lap when we led all day and beat me in that one still stings he actually has that picture hung up somewhere I saw you were doing a tv special on him once and he had that picture in the background of him crossing the finish line ahead of me um so yeah I remember that hopefully uh hopefully we can turn the tables and uh, you know pull off a Pull off a win on him toward the end someday. Is it something about this place that lends itself to those one-on-one -on -one battles that you mentioned you had one with Burton and last year it was Tez and Johnson and with Tony and Carl, I guess, you just wear that. Right. Well, yeah, I don't know. I think every every circumstance is different. You know, every race plays out, you know, a little bit different. Obviously, if you get, you know, like last year, Brad got out front and he did a spectacular job. Uh, was the only car on two tires and the, and the guy on four tires was was catching him, you know, so that, that lended itself to a uh, – to an exciting battle for the win, you know, because he had the fastest car, you know, behind the car who was backing up a little bit. So I think, I think any any racetrack, any race, I mean, that's how you create exciting finishes and exciting racing is by you know separate the field a little bit. You gotta, you know, the faster car catching the slower car is what's going to create passing and an exciting race. So it's just uh, those circumstances, uh, you know, had that where we we're fading a little bit and and he was better then. We'll go to Ed. We'll go to Jim, and then we'll go right here to Carlotta. Ed Hinton, ESPN.com. Uh, Matt, obviously for you and Jimmy, 1.5 mile tracks are a strong point. Uh, seems like maybe at this track and the Gen 6 car the last few races, maybe he's run a little bit better than you. With the strides your team made for you at New Hampshire and at Martinsville, do you think that that y'all could come up with a setup and some strides forward that would that would Maybe uh, leapfrog you ahead so that so that you could uh, maybe wouldn't have to duel him that you could just flat out run him here. Well, I mean that's the goal. I mean the goal every week is to go out and figure out how to outrun another 42 drivers and figure out how to try to try to win a race. So I mean I really feel like um, you know when when we've been at our best. I really feel like at pretty much all the tracks except for the road courses, which um, we'll just put that 100% on the driver. I feel like we've on our best days, we've been competitive everywhere. Obviously, we've won some mile and a half races. Uh, uh, New Hampshire was good for us. Martinsville was really good for us last week. Um, 
You know, so I feel like uh, when we're at our best and we hit it right, we can we can run run pretty good anywhere. So, uh, but you know, you have to you have to be able to prove that every week and every week, you know, things change and and things are different. So, you know, so to answer your question. I mean, I hope so. I mean, that's always the goal. But um, man, they're pretty good. They're pretty good everywhere. And um, you know, certainly Jeff kind of creeped back in the picture last week, and there's still still I think five cars that are fairly uh, fairly close within striking distance uh, if somebody has a problem. So. Hopefully we can go race hard and uh, and get a result this week and uh, you know keep it rolling. And uh, everybody's talked about how clean you've raced them here. Uh, the obvious question you guys hate to hear, but we have to ask: with a points battle going on like this, comes down to another duel like that. Does does your racing them clean stand regardless, or or with so much at stake, do do maybe maybe you race them a little harder or or, or rougher than than before? Well, I think you always race as hard as you can, especially when it comes down to a win, comes down to that last run of the day, comes down to obviously a championship. I think you always race as, as hard as you can, but at the same time try to be as fair and as, as clean as you can. So, I mean, I think you always, uh, you always throughout your career, you know, you find out, you know, you make mistakes, you learn from them, all those kind of things. But I think if you try to race people the way you want to be raced, it usually it usually works out both ways. So, um, you know, the goal is to always uh, get your car running good where you can go pass and you can go out run another guy, um, you know, not worry about that. You know, people ask, you, ask me a lot, a lot of questions at Martinsville about, you know, cars, you know, being roughed up and doing all that stuff. And I was like, man, usually when you see, you know, Jimmy, Jeff, Denny, those guys that win there all the time, their cars sit in victory lane, hardly ever have a scratch on them. So I think that's the goal is to get your car working better than the next guy so you can just pass them. Let's go to Jim, Carlotta, and then Bob Pockers. Jim Utter, Shaw Observer. Um, you made, <coughs> excuse me, you made two really big changes in the offseason. One was to go to a new organization, but as much as we know the uh, success in this sport is dependent on a good relationship between driver and crew chief, you also got a new crew chief. I wondered um, now this far into the season if you could talk just a little bit about what, if anything, you knew much about Jason and what have you come to learn about him during the course of this year. Well, I mean, I, I knew of Jason. I really didn't know a lot. Um, I didn't know him personally at all. I don't. I don't think we ever really more than just kind of seen him or saying hi or something. I don't think I really knew him more than that. Um, talked to him for about five minutes, you know, when we made the announcement, and then I uh, went to dinner with him one night. And other than that, until the day after Homestead, I didn't really, uh, really, you know, talk to him a lot or uh, get to know him a lot. So uh, certainly not talking about racing or race cars or anything like that. So I think um, whenever you get to meet new people in general and especially getting to work with them too and build new relationships you always learn a lot about each other um you know and and from what i knew about jason and just um and just the, the feeling i had you know about him and watching him work and how he goes about his business and all that i i thought would be a, a good a good fit um, but you never really know that you know until you get down into it and get working together so certainly i've learned a lot about jason he's obviously a, a huge um a huge factor a huge key you know, in our in our success this year, he's the he's the head coach. He's the guy who, who uh, I guess not literally in that organization, but he's the guy who runs the runs the team and and uh, takes care of the guys and uh, communicates with me. And he's uh, you know he's obviously a huge key to it. He's a he's a hard worker. He's um, he's really really smart. He's got a lot of common sense. He's got a cool head. Um, you know, he, he commands a lot of respect. He does a great job great job leading that team and uh, we become good friends and uh, obviously I really love working with him and uh, you know love going to the racetrack with him well I didn't really have you know not really because I didn't really have any uh, preconceived notions with any with any of it you know really with any of the group with Jason with the organization or anything I honestly went in there with a totally totally open mind and um, and just try to try to get absorbed into the system a little bit and try to absorb it a little bit and try to learn everybody so um, y you know I guess um, I, I guess I expected you know to run to run good I expected the team to run good and all that but uh, I guess if there's a surprise I probably didn't ex expect him to be that good and for us to run you know as, as good as we have and and for our communication and stuff to, to be what it is so really after our first test in, in December was probably the big eye-opening day for me you know we went through that test and then um, we met up and talked for a couple hours about it and it was just uh, we have a lot of the same uh, same ideas and kind of the way we like to, would like to approach things and work on things go to Carlotta Bob and Dustin go ahead 
Hi, Matt. Carlotta Schmick and Hill Country oh, Happening. In front of me, that's why I didn't see you. <laughs> um, you have a teammate in contention in this uh, chase. Is this an advantage to you, or do you feel it's a disadvantage? Well, uh, you know, neither one as far as where you necessarily are in points. I always feel like the better your teammates run, um, of course, you want to beat them, but the better that the better that they run and, and all that, the more it helps you. You know, I think you, you all, all three of us want to help each other. And I think, uh, you know, the better we all run, the, the better it is for the whole organization. You know, we have more more data to look through, more uh, information to talk about, more more things to, to ask them about and work together and, and all that. So certainly um, when all three of the cars run good, I think that's good for all of us. And at what point in the race, say tonight, you're right up there at the front and Kyle is right up there at the front with you. At what point in the race do you just forget Kyle's teammate? When they drop the green. Uh, I mean, I think you, I think you always try to, um, you know, not put your teammate in a bad situation. Uh, you know, you try to maybe show them a little extra room on the track, that type of thing. But really, when they drop the green on Sundays, it's one against 42. I mean, I think being a good teammate is way more about. Uh, during the week, during test sessions, during practice, during debriefs, um, working together, doing all that kind of stuff, trying to help each other. If you if you find something, try to help all three teams with it. You know, information that type of thing, more so than it is on you know Sundays during the race. I don't think there's a ton of team racing that goes on, even in plate races anymore. You try to work with your teammates and try to help if you can, but um, you know it's a little different than it used to be. And certainly when you get out here on. Uh, on Sunday and drop the green, you know, you're trying to, uh, you're racing against 42 cars. Let's go to Bob, Dustin, and Jerry Fraley. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, Bob Hocker, Sporting News. Uh, Jimmy often talks about his haters, and I'm curious if you've felt any vibe from either fans or the garage that people are rooting for you because they're rooting against him, and do you feel any sort of maybe guilt or, not necessarily guilt, but just, is it weird to feel that knowing that Jimmy's kind of a friend of yours? I don't know that I've that I've really felt that. I think I think you know you're always gonna have people that are uh, well. Hopefully, you always have people that are your fans, and you're gonna always have people that 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 aren't your fan. You know, and there's gonna be people people that wish you success and people that wish you don't have success. I mean, I think that's just normal. That's kind of sports. Uh, that's the way it goes. I think uh, when somebody wins as as much as they win, uh, you know, you probably got people that like to see somebody somebody beat them you know and you know there's some people and then there's other people that 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 like that they like to cheer for the dynasty and they like to see the same same guy and team dominate and then there's people that cheer for the underdog so i mean i think that that everybody likes something different i mean if everybody just liked the same driver and the same team and and whatever that that wouldn't be wouldn't be real exciting so i i, I don't know i haven't got a feeling like people walk up to you and wish bad things on somebody else or anything like that but you know i've had a lot of people you know walk up that makes you feel good that you know say they're pulling for you and they're happy you're doing good and that kind of thing and then you got others that probably aren't all right we're on a little bit of a time crunch here we got three more dustin jerry and then carlos man strict <laughs> got a schedule to meet young man go ahead dustin long motor racing network um matt when you had the crew chief change at roush after the daytona 500 withdrew uh, certainly you know that was shocking and hap how ha how quickly it happened shocking for drew but he talked about hearing from you later that that day and the email and talking to him and and, and how important it was in kind of maintaining the friendship relationship that you guys have why was it important to contact him what what did you want to kind of get across at that point because obviously uh you know something wasn't right something needed to be changed and that was certainly an abrupt thing it would have been easy to you know him for you guys not to talk from that day forward well I, I mean I think throughout life and and certainly throughout this sport you you create a lot of different relationships and you know you you make friends and you work with people and and sometimes it's hard to to separate that you know it's always hard when uh you know you become friends with somebody and you work with somebody and you have some success together and you have some hardships together whatever and then for whatever reason it you kind of break that up or whatever you still want to want to you know, maintain friends with those people. And uh, I've never been a good person at managing race teams or figuring out what I need there. I'm glad other people do that. So, um, so yeah, I mean, um, you know, in Drew's case, I have a lot of respect for Drew. He did, uh, 
he did a did a great job. We won a Daytona 500 together. We won the second race of the year together. We, you know, there's just uh, you know that particular case. There was a lot of uh, a lot of other factors that went into it as as far as the team and organization at that time. It wasn't really just about about him and I. Him and I got along fine and and worked together fine. And I uh, still got a lot of respect for him and think that he's a, he's a really smart guy, really hard worker. Let's go to uh, Jerry, and we'll end with Carlos. Jerry Fraley, Dallas Morning News. Uh, Jeff Burton will have less of a presence next year, maybe no presence at the cup level. Can you envision what that's going to be like not having him around? You know, it's it's different. You know, I thought about that a little bit um, when I went to Roush. Mark Martin and Jeff Burton were certainly two of the biggest influences you know on my career and probably modeled a lot of my uh, you know driving style things on the track things off the track off of Mark and Jeff you know those were the the two guys those are the two guys that I look up to those are the guys that I asked for advice um, asked for help you know all that stuff so certainly um, you know as you see you know the calendar pages keep turning and and things change and and when when some of those people aren't around on a weekly basis anymore it's certainly um, it's certainly different, and then you know that you're getting closer to being that next tier, you know. So certainly that's, uh, you know, that's different. Jeff's had a, um, you know, I think he's still got a lot more good racing ahead of him, but he's had a heck of a career, and he's been a, been, a, you know, a big influence on me, a big help to me, you know, along with Mark Martin. And I'm, I don't think Mark's gonna be around on a full-time basis anymore either next year. You never know about him; he might be, um, but but he probably won't be. So that's, um, yeah, that's 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 different for sure. Final question, Carlos. Carlos Mendez, Forward Star Telegram. Uh, Matt, you and Jimmy are obviously friends. Do you know what button to push on him on the track or off to gain an advantage? No. <laughs> hey, Jimmy. I got something funny to show you in a minute. <laughs> nah, I'm not really, you know, it might change, you know, from his end if we're still in the hallway to the end, but I'm just not really into all the, all the, you know, head game. I'm not smart enough to be in the head games and, you know, insults and some of the stuff we've seen happen over the last few years I'm just I'm just really not I just my brain is over capacity already with trying to figure out how to make my race car fast enough to to beat the best you know so you know they always say if you want to be the man you got to beat the man and he's always definitely been the man so um, you know really just trying to concentrate on that trying to figure out how to make our car fast enough to uh, to, to go out and be able to compete with uh, not only him but the rest of the field each and every week because it's a, it's a competitive group